Hey guys, I'm starting a new Flutter series on my channel. We're going to be building Instagram with Flutter and Firebase from scratch. Throughout this series, you're going to learn how to implement and interact with the Cloud Firestore database, how to model your data in Cloud Firestore, learn Cloud functions, push notifications, and more. In this video, we're going to be coding the login and signup UI of our Instagram clone. Let's start by cleaning up our Flutter project. We can remove the theme data and also clear out the My Homepage. Uh, let's rename the app to Instagram clone. To get rid of the red debug banner in the top, we can set debug show checked mode banner to false. And then our home page will be login screen for now. Inside our lib folder, let's make a folder called screens. And let's make login screen dot dart and signup screen dot dart. Inside our login screen, let's start by making a stateful widget called login screen and then importing material dot dart. If we go back to main dot dart, we can import login screen now and save that. And now our screen's black. So let's return a scaffold widget with the body and text of Instagram. And now we see that Instagram's on top left. We want a form in the center of the screen. So let's wrap this in a column and then wrap the column in a center widget. And for the column, let's set the main axis alignment to center and cross axis alignment to center. Now Instagram's in the center. Let's set the style to text style, font size 50. And now we want to add the Instagram font. So let's make a new folder called assets. And inside that we'll make a folder called fonts. Let's drag in our Instagram font called Billabong. And then we can go to our pubspec.yaml scroll down to fonts and we can uncomment these lines then we'd add assets slash fonts slash billabong dot ttf and then if we go back to login screen we can set the font family to billabong And if we hot restart, it doesn't load. Since we're adding a new font, we have to restart the whole entire app. And now we have our Instagram font. So next we want to start adding the form. So we can start by creating a form key for validation. So at the top, we can set final form key equals a global key form state. And what this is going to do is allow us to set up validation for the form. So let's make a form widget where the key is equal to form key. Inside our form, we're going to want a child of a column since we're going to have multiple text fields. Uh, main axis size, let's set that to minimum and then the children. So let's start by making a text form field with a decoration input decoration label text of email. Then we see in the simulator that the email form pops up. Then we make a validator so on input, let's just check if it contains, for now we can do, check if it contains an at sign. Uh, we can do a more complex email check with regex in the future. And then unsaved. 
we can set our email variable to the input. So at the top we want to declare a string email and a password. And now let's make the let's actually add padding to the text field. So we can get rid of const and add symmetric padding. Horizontal is 30 and vertical can be 10. That looks better. And then let's add the password field. So let's change this to password. And we can also add obscure text. So instead of having a plain text that's visible, we can obscure the text so it becomes dots. Like this. And then for validation, we want to have the password be at least six characters long. So we can say input.length is less than six. And then the ternary operator. And we want the error message to be, uh, must be at least six characters. So now we have our two text fields. We can start making the button now. So let's add a size box of height 20 for spacing. And let's make a flat button. We're on pressed, we're going to submit the form. Uh, the color could be blue. And the child, let's make it a text widget called login. And let's just put submit up here for now so we can see what the button looks like. Let's change the text color to white. So style, text style, colors dot white. Let's actually make the font size a bit bigger. 18.0. Uh, we can also make the button expand to the left and right by adding a container widget and setting its width to 250. Let's add some padding, edge insets dot all 10. Now for the submit button, we want to create a function called submit. And then inside the submit function, we can set, we can check if the form key dot current state is validated. And if it is validated, then the form key dot current state dot save. And then this will allow us to make sure that the email and password meet our conditions. So inside here, we would be uh, logging in the user or attempting to log them in. So now we can test this out. Let's first try out the validation. So if we just type in some characters without the at sign, hit log in. It's going to say, please enter a valid email. And since our password is less than six characters, it's going to print out this error message too. But if we put the at sign in, and then for the password, let's leave that there. The error didn't pop up here, so we know that the email's good. And then the password can say is five characters, so it's still giving us the error. Six, we don't get the error. And then we get our email here, and our password is null because Inside our password form, we have to set change email to password. So we hit login again. We get our email output and then the password down here. So now we want to go to the uh, sign up page. So we can do this by creating, let's copy the container. Let's add another size box. I have 20 for spacing. And we'll call this go to sign up. 
and then we can set the on pressed to a navigator push named so we're going to be pushing a named root and to do this we actually need to set up uh, our roots in the main file but first let's go to our login screen to the top and let's add a static final string ID and we'll set this equal to login screen now this allows us to access this variable ID without instantiating the login screen so we can do login screen dot ID and then same thing for the signup screen let's set this up really fast so let's make a stateful widget called signup screen import material and then let's add the ID inside the stateful widget so ID signup screen and let's have this return a scaffold now if we go back here we see our home is login screen we can add roots now so inside our routes login screen dot ID and then we say context and send that to login screen and then same idea for the signup screen so signup screen dot ID context signup screen and save that and if we go back to login screen if we push the root name signup screen dot ID so we're pushing a named root signup screen ID which is inside main dot dart so signup screen dot ID pushes signup screen onto the stack and now if we save that let's hot reload and then hit go to sign up it brings us to the sign up screen and we can drag on the simulator like this to bring it back so now let's actually just copy the scaffold here because it's a very similar similar UI let's also copy the submit up here and the form key if we hit save let's go to sign up and we have the same exact UI let's change go to sign up right now to back to login and then instead of doing navigator.push named, we're just going to do navigator.pop. And that's going to allow us to go back and forth between the screens. And the last thing we want to do is add a name parameter. So up here, let's add name. So we can print the name in this inside the submit. Let's change login the text here to sign up. And then we can copy one of these fields, the text form fields with the padding. Let's put it on top. Save. Now we have another email field. So let's change the label text to name. Uh, please enter a valid name. And for the validator, we want to check if the input is empty. So we can just say uh, input dot is empty. And then remember for the on saved, we want to change that to name equals input. So if I type, if I hit sign up right now, it'll give us all the error messages. But if I put a space in the name, it's going to say that that's a valid name. So what we want to do is say input dot trim. So we trim off the white space on both the leading and the end. So now if we say space and hit sign up, it's going to give us an error. So just to recap, we now have our login page UI and we have our sign up page. In the next video, we're going to be adding Cloud Firestore to our project and authenticating users with Firebase sign-in. Thanks for watching and see you guys next time.